So we are living in a changed world. In the 20th century, when we all grew up, it was about energy and manufacturing and transportation. Today, we live in information, knowledge, and innovation economies driven by technology. It's a paradigm shift. It's a big game changer. And most of us have not gotten our heads around it as individuals or as educators or educational systems. Um, but this is exceedingly important now. 80% uh, of California firms now say information and communication technologies are important to the productivity of their organizations. Everybody depends on information and communication technologies today. This is how students find and apply to schools and classes. It's how they do their homework and view their syllabus and take online classes and complete their assignments. It's how workers find their jobs and complete their resumes and uh, do their work and report to their superiors. And it doesn't matter what they do these days. A car mechanic uses technology to diagnose what's wrong with your car. Uh, the airport customer service person uses computers. Organizations rely on these technologies in every industry. It's how they interact with their suppliers. It's how they find and serve their customers. It's how they organize themselves and conduct business. And society com increasingly re relies on ICT. It's how we inform the public. It's how we deliver government services. It's how you stay in touch with family and friends. But it's a nutty space. It's really, really chaotic and confusing. You know, people ask me what I do, and I say, computer something or another, their eyes roll back in their head. They're like, God, please don't tell me anymore. Um, it, there's jargon, competing messages. Uh, new technology is emerging constantly. It's splitting off into something new. There's this phenomenon of convergence where technologies are coming together. Um, it's, a, it's a really messy space. This trend of convergence we've all seen. Previously, separate things are now the same. In the past, the networking world of scenic, uh, what was a, a separate video voice and data network system is now a converged network. You know, this thing used to be about five different devices, and now it's one. Information and communications, or ICT, is an umbrella term. It's a superset term, and it's used widely outside the US. It's basically anything uh, related to computers and software and networking. And we didn't make it up. It's used everywhere else in the world. If you go somewhere with a password, chances are that's the word they use. And America is one of the few holdouts that still uses information technology. Uh, the European Union uses it. The United Nations uses it. World Bank, International Telecommunications Union, Australia. It's a superset. So hardware doesn't do so much without software. Software doesn't do anything without hardware. Networking is a combination of hardware and software. Um, the internet is a network. Telecommunications is a network. So we're not trying to change the name of anything else that anybody's doing out there, but just say that we need, at some level, a superset we use to talk about all of these things and coordinate the activity of all of these things. And we haven't really been doing that in the past. So we're funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, they have an advanced technological education group. It's primarily focused at two-year colleges in the applied technology domain. Uh, a lot of what we do is advocating the importance of ICT to a variety of different stakeholders, but it's, it's really about preparing the workforce we need to be successful in this new world. We've got a lot of resources out there, a website that's full of good information. Um, there's information on uh, the programs at all 112 of California's community colleges, largest higher, higher educational system in the US. 
one in four community college students in the U.S. attends a California community college. If we can make this work here, potentially we have national impact. There's information on all the programs at the universities in California. Uh, we have a YouTube channel where, with tons of videos. There's a blog for building community, a Facebook page, newsletters. You know, we've got thousands of educators we communicate with on a regular basis. We have a winter conference every year in, in San Francisco, bringing people from industry to share their ideas and resources for how to do a better job with this, and also give educators a chance to share their best practices. Um, we work with the California Department of Education. One of the things that's badly broken in our educational system is this silo effect. You know, the University of California system doesn't talk to the CSU system. None of them talk to the community college system. None of them talk to the K-12 system. And yet we need to create coherent pathways to develop this education. Um, we've done a lot of research um, to identify how big and important ICT industries are in California and ICT occupations. Um, we call out certain emerging technologies that deserve uh, attention because there's high workforce demand and not much education preparing people to do those jobs. We've got a big pathways project in San Francisco. San Francisco's booming right now. One in four uh, non-government jobs in San Francisco is tech related right now. And yet, we can't grow our own. We can't grow our own workforce. Where are we going to get them? H-1Bs, it's not the future. We've done a, a project to create something called a National Cyber League, which allows students to complete, compete in cybersecurity exercises in virtually hosted lab environments. Um, the first season, which had teams competing against each other, uh, was very interesting to see a uh, California Community College team beat DePaul University for the national championship. Uh, community college students really enjoy that kind of thing. Uh, we do a lot of faculty professional development because if teachers can't keep up with the fast pace of change in this world, uh, they're not relevant and they're not helping students. And the funding for that's dried up through the mainstream and we, we take that as a priority. But the big picture issue has to do with supply and demand in the workforce in California. Um, so the demand side, the demand for for ICT workforce. On the industry side, you know, how, how big and important are ICT industries? Those that make goods and services related to ICT. It's about 46,000 companies in California, $172 billion in revenue. They employ a million people already, um, $76 billion in wages. They pay about twice the average. Good jobs. You know, people know this intuitively. It's booming but people don't think of it as one thing. They think of it as many things. And here's an example of the, of the advantage strategically of using an ICT framework. This is wages paid uh, by industry, two-digit two NAICS code. And the closest thing to ICT that exists right now today is this information category. First of all, it doesn't get that much attention because it's about halfway down the list. Second of all, about half of it isn't technology. It's things like newspapers. As newspapers lose jobs, that leads to the false impression that ICT is not doing well in the state. In fact, ICT is number two in the state in, in terms of wages paid by industry. So using this ICT framework gets more attention from policymakers and educational system planners, and that's why the rest of the world does it. That's why they have good public policies um, around ICT. They get it in ways that we don't hear, where it's so fragmented. You've probably heard this one. All the jobs went to China and India. It's absolute nonsense. It's just balderdash, and we have to do something to address that misinformation. ICT employment, unlike a lot of other industries, 
isn't limited to ICT industries. You don't just go work for Cisco and Microsoft. You can work for any organization in any industry. Uh, you know, healthcare. Look at the boom in healthcare IT right now. Um, financial services. Where would Charles Schwab be right now without technology? Biotech wouldn't exist without technology. These jobs are everywhere. So you have to look at these jobs everywhere. And that's a tricky one for a lot of people. They don't quite get that. In the US, it's about one in 20 jobs already. And it's growing gangbusters. Um, and they're good jobs. They pay well. In California, uh, first quarter 2011, 1.2 million people already working in these jobs. Growing fast, they pay about twice the average. And it might be, you know, at the bank, or it might be at any organization. This is a salary guide for 2013, Robert Half. It's all the different occupations related to ICT. I'm not going to drag you through the details. They're good jobs. They pay well. Look over here in this right column. These are the wages from year to year. Up, 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 up. Up, up. That's the way supply and demand works. We cannot get enough of these people. And most of the schools aren't, aren't developing people for this. This is where the jobs are in the new world. And we as educators are not preparing people for these jobs. We're about a million and a half workers short in the United States right now, today, in, in this technology domain. You know, one in two people are with a bachelor degree is at home living with mom and uh, has debt, can't get a job. Uh, we see a ton of, of people with a bachelor degree coming to community college today to get the hands-on skills that will actually get them a job. But on the supply side, it's chaotic. California Community College system, about 5,700 teachers teaching this kind of stuff. Uh, about 679,000 enrollments across the California Community College system in ICT-related classes um, in 2010 and 11. But 112 colleges, 295 different academic departments. They have 177 different names. And they're all over the place. Sometimes they're in a in an engineering department, sometimes they're in a business department, sometimes they could be anywhere. There's an utterly inconsistent logic for that. They're hard to find in school websites. Um, when you look at uh, degrees, uh, there's more than 600 different degrees offered in the community college system. They have more than 400 different names. There's 1,500 different academic certificates. They have more than 1,100 names. It's astonishing that you can come up with that many different word combinations. But that's the way it is in tech, right? You gotta be, everybody has to create their own thing. You know, what's my job? I'm an evangelist. I'm a guru. And then they complain as employers, I can't find enough gurus. Well, how do, how do you tell an educator what a guru is, you know? How do you, how do you tell the educators what you need to do? But, so, what's, ha what's happening here is that the system is broken. You can't articulate and transfer from institution to institution because every two points in the system is unique. It's about 46,000 different possible articulation negotiations in a system like this. That's not workable. It's chaos. It's just broken. And it, it's characterized as a supply and demand skills mismatch or a skills gap problem. So, half of California companies report difficulty recruiting employees with appropriate IC, ICT skills and training. That's just messed up. That's broken. In this period of high unemployment where we're trying to get the economy going, the employers can't get the people they need to be successful and hire other people. It's called the skills gap problem. And it's bigger in IT than it is in other fields, and it's growing. Um, and, and ICT 
is enabling technology. It's how people get their stuff done in, in, in every domain. If I'm an accountant, I can use technology to do my accounting better. Then I'm more productive as an organization. I'm more successful and more profitable, or however you want to measure that. If we can't deploy the technology, we don't get those gains. And that's increasingly how people compete in a flat global, global economy. It's the wild, wild west, and we need to do something about it. And in the past, it's been largely left up to teachers to figure out what they teach. And, and mostly, the information I get from teachers is they just want to know what they're supposed to teach. But nobody's given them that information today. It's hard times for education in particular. Um, budgets are being cut. Everybody's haggard and full of anxiety, unable to make decisions, unable to progress. Uh, it's a hard time to incent change in educators, but it's absolutely essential if we're going to dig our way out of this mess to figure out what we're going to do about technology and technology workforce development. And one of the things that's missing is a functional workforce system in the technology domain. There needs to be something that we all align to uh, because you can't negotiate one to one and get out of this thing. It's moving too fast. There needs to be some kind of a standard. And you say standard to, to educators and they, you know, you get this horrible reaction. Ironically, none of these technologies work without standards. But we need some kind of a standard. And the uh, Department of Labor, we've been working with them uh, to revise their IT competency model and incorporate the feedback of lots of different people. Because the way uh, these technology programs have been informed in the past is through uh, business and industry advisory models. So you get the educators in a room, you invite some business and industry people, you ask them what should I be teaching, and they answer it, probably to the best of their ability, but it's based on whatever they have top of mind at the moment in their individual situation um, or based on what they've read recently or who they've talked to recently. Um, and it's not statistically valid. You know, you have a, an advisory meeting a year later, half, the, half those people don't show up again. There's new people in the room. You get completely new information. And it's no wonder that all the programs are different. So we've been really, we're in the midst now of trying to, to get this established in California as something to line up on. Um, and it and addresses a lot of uh, employers' different levels of concern. At the bottom is the per personal effectiveness competencies. Um, can you communicate well and play nice and um, solve problems, those kinds of things. At the academic level, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but really, really importantly, there's this uh, IT fundamentals section there, which is digital literacy, basically, as a critical new basic skill component in, in the academic level for workplace readiness for anybody, really. And then workplace competencies, you know, can you understand an organizational mission and, and come up with some way to add value to it and work together and, and workforce teams. And this fourth layer is industry-wide technical competencies, so foundational stuff. No matter what your specialized role is in an IT operation, what do you need to know and be able to do? So what does the networking person need to know about? programming and systems administration and vice versa. What's the common core? That's what we're going after here. Um, so we've just done this survey study in California. It's been very interesting. We've gone out to employers in a statistically significant way. Got 777 of them to complete this detailed uh, survey. We hit them with about 300 different draft competencies and said, should we keep it? Should we throw it out? Should we change it? Should we add something to it? 
74% of them agree that we need something like this to line up on. We need some structure, some standards. But this is the one I'm really excited about. We can now say with 99% confidence that of uh, California employer rep representatives with direct knowledge of ICT worker, you know, competency needs, 85% of them agree that it's as important in the 21st century to uh, be able to be, di be digitally literate as it is to be able to read, write, and do arithmetic. And for the first time, we know what that means because there's clear actionable competencies associated with that, and it's not just lip service. So there's an opportunity to go to legislators and educational system planners and try to get California to adopt this or something like it as a new basic skill requirement. So anybody who comes out of education, public education anywhere uh, can do at least these things with technology, can function capably with technology. So that's exciting. Uh, that's the, the main part of the story that I you know, wanted to tell right now, and I know everybody's trying to go home. Uh, but I'll, if anybody has questions, be glad to take them. Any questions? So obviously building the workforce is what we're supposed to be doing here in higher education. So what is it that you're asking us to plug into here with this organization? Uh, so where, what's your background? Where do you come from? Uh, California State University, San Bernardino, and I'll, I'll put a, a shameless plug in. Mm -hmm. I'm actually partnering with CyberWatch West okay. next week Great. <laughs> in order to do um, a secure, secure IT conference along with the uh, cyber collegiate cyber competition. Uh -huh. And our whole theme is building the cybersecurity workforce. Right. And that's an important part of the workforce and it's got a lot of public a attention today. Um, I think we need to develop some common nomenclature for this field so that we can communicate more effectively. Um, there's something that we call the Tower of Babel effect and that is uh, you get people in the room who all are experts at technology and you try to talk about issues and problems and resolve them and they're ineffectual. People walk out rubbing their temples at the end of it because the words don't mean the same things. And everybody has a different mental map of what the space is like. So I think we need to move together for one to have a common framework of what these things mean. We went to an advisory meeting at, at IBM uh, in Massachusetts about a year ago. And these were heavy players who were, who were assigned to advise education on tech matters. And we posed one question to them, and that was, what does tech mean? And for two and a half hours, they were unable to come up with an agreement about what the word tech means. And yet, we're throwing this around, like we're developing things for the tech economy, or we're developing tech workers. We don't even know what tech means. So common nomenclature, common terms. I think we need to recognize uh, some of the things that are broken in our system, and a lot of those have to do with transfer pathways. Um, between the community college and the CSUs, um, I'm reasonably confident that, that transfer pathways are gonna work pretty well for traditional computer science, because that's been defined by ACM and others over time. They're probably going to work pretty well in the, in the business domain, business information systems kinds of things, because those are mature and because there's endpoints in, the, uh, in the CSU system for it. What's broken bad uh, between the CSUs and the, and the community colleges is the IT pathway, the hands-on stuff. So people come to the community college, they get hands-on, and that's what they like. They learn networking. They rip that box apart. They plug wires together. That's what the employers want to hire. But then there's an HR screen out there for a bachelor degree. 
and they say, well, okay, I, I'm going to transfer and get my bachelor degree. There aren't that many places for them to go in California because most of the CSUs aren't interested in that, that hands-on applied technology domain. They're interested in the theoretical, but not so much in that hands-on. So, you know, one of the things I think we could do is fix that. You know, either convince employers they don't need a bachelor degree or make a pathway for them to get bachelor degree and walk out of there with the hands-on skills that the, uh, that the employers really want. Any other questions? Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jim.